In this video, we'll take an ordinary sketch and turn it into a beautiful vector. Let's get started. To start off, I already have my sketch here in my document, as well as this color swatch. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a link in the video description where you can download this sketch and the color swatch that I'll be using. Okay, to start, the very first step is to see if you can trace over any part of your design using the shape tools. Now, this sketch has some pretty irregular shapes going on, so the only part that I think we could use a shape tool for would be the nose right here. I'll grab the ellipse tool, and then I'm just going to zoom in and click and drag out a little ellipse like this. Then I'll rotate it around, try to match it up nicely, maybe make it a little smaller, like that. I'm going to make this black, so I'll go over to the colors and change it to black like that. Okay, next I'm going to trace around all of the lines on my sketch using the pen tool. Now, the pen tool can be a little complicated, but I'll try to keep it pretty simple for this video. To start, let's select the pen tool, it's right over here. Then, going over here to the context toolbar, I'm going to make sure that I'm in pen mode. I'm going to make sure rubber band mode is turned on. And then I'm going to turn off snapping. With all of those settings ready, now we can begin tracing. To start, I'm just going to click and drag on this point right here, and I'm going to trace this all the way around the tail right here. So I'll just click and drag to start, and I'm clicking and dragging in the direction of where my line is headed. So you can see I'm clicking and dragging like that. And then I'm going to bring it around until our line starts to change direction, which I think is about right here. Then I'll click and drag, and you can see that blue line is showing you how far to drag out so that it matches up. So I'm going to drag out to about here, and then again, I'm going to go where about where our line starts to change direction. I'll drag another line right here, and I'm just going to continue to do this all the way around. As I get to this area where the curve turns more sharply, I'm just going to click and drag out just a little bit, and then I'll bring it around like this. Once I get to the end of my line, I'm just going to press escape to end my line. And now I can begin to adjust some of these points, and I can do that using the node tool. This node tool allows you to take any of the points and move them around. So I'm going to move this one in a little bit, just so this line matches up better. And you can do this on any of the other points as well. Okay, I think this line looks good, so I'm just going to go up here to the stroke panel, and I'm going to increase the width so we can see this line better. I think that looks pretty good for this. Alright, now we can move on to tracing the rest of the lines. But to do this, we first need to know one pen tool shortcut, and that's making sharp corners. You can see here that the direction changes so sharply, and there's an easy shortcut to do this. I'll grab the pen tool again. Make sure you press escape so you're not continuing this line. And then I'm just going to click and drag to start this line. Then at this corner, I'm going to click and drag to create that curved line. And then while I'm still holding down my cursor, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard, which breaks the curve so that I can quickly change direction. Then I'm just going to lift up on my cursor, and I'll lift up on Alt or Option, and we can continue to draw our line. I'm going to bring it to this corner right here, I'll click and drag, and then I'll hold Alt or Option, and I'll change directions again. Again, I'll lift up on my cursor first, and then Alt or Option, and I'll continue this all the way around the cat's head. So I'm just adding these gentle curves in. I think about here, I'll add this corner again. I'll hold Alt or Option to change directions. I'll click and drag here. Alt or Option again to change directions. And then I'll end my line and I'll press Escape. All right, this cat's head looks pretty good. I think this point looks a little strange though. I'll just grab the Node tool and adjust that. And now I'm just going to continue to trace all of the lines on my cat. 
I know that the pen tool can be a little tricky to get used to, and there really is such a learning curve. If you'd like to learn more about better techniques and shortcuts for using the pen tool, my Affinity Designer Beyond the Basics course is actually perfect for this. I designed that course specifically around mastering the pen tool, and there are so many different examples to practice with, so I recommend that you check that out if you want to get really comfortable with the pen tool. I'll leave a link to that course in the video description. Okay, I just finished with the tracing, so now I'm just going to go over to our layers. I'm going to scroll all the way down, and I'm going to turn off this sketch layer. That way we can more clearly see all of our lines. And then I'm just going to go through all of our lines and clean them up a little bit now that it's easier to see them. I'll grab the node tool, and I'm going to look for mistakes like this. So you can see that this line right here is overlapping a little bit with this outer line right here. So using the node tool, I'm just going to click on that line, and then I'm going to bring it in just a little bit so that you can't see that end poking out. There we go. And I'm just going to go through my entire design, moving these lines around so that they match up better. And if you see any other curves that you're not really a big fan of, I think this curve could be a little bit improved, you can feel free to move those now and adjust them. I think I want to move that one. I think I want to move this right up here a little bit more. Okay, I think those lines are looking pretty good. Once you have the lines where you want them, you can go ahead and come back over here, and I'm just going to select all of my curve lines, leaving out that ellipse line. I'm just going to select all of these. I'll hold down shift to click on the top one, and then I'll group them all together using command or control G. This just keeps our layers a little bit more organized, and now we can begin to color our design. To color, I'm just going to select the swatch right under here, that way all of our color layers are underneath all of these stroke lines. Then I'm going to grab the pen tool, and I'm going to begin to trace the entire cat. So starting right up here, let's see, I think I'll just click and drag right here to start. And then I'm going to try to line up all of my lines with these black lines that I already traced. I'll click and drag, I'll hold Alt or Option to change directions, and then I'll click and drag again. Now, right now, this is laying down another black line. I don't actually want this to have a stroke, so in the color panel, I'm going to click on our stroke, and then I'll click right here to remove the stroke. So now we can continue to just trace all the way around this, keeping this blue line matched up with the black line the best we can. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's overlapping with that black line, that should be good. If you ever mess up, feel free to press Command or Control Z to undo where you've laid down your point. And I'm just going to continue to trace this all the way around. Okay, so I just finished tracing the outline of the cat. Now we can fill it with color. I'm going to use my color swatch over here, and I'm going to change this to the fill color. I'll click and drag the color picker to select this lighter color right up here, and then I'll apply it to the fill. And now you can see our cat has been filled with this color. Next, I want to add a little bit of variety to this cat by adding a secondary color. So using the pen tool, once again, I'm just going to begin tracing. But this time, I'm actually going to start my trace outside of the cat, and then I'll bring it in like this. I'm going to bring this color all along the back of the cat. I'll click right here to end it. All right, and then I'm just going to trace down and around the cat's face like this. And then I'm going to bring it up here, tracing around the cat's nose. All right, and then I'll bring it all the way around the cat's head. But once you get to about this point, you can begin to trace outside like this, because we're going to make this layer a child layer to this lighter color here. So I'm just going to change the color to this middle color right here. I'll apply it. And then I'm going to make this a child layer to this first one, which will snap it in place. And you can see now we have a little bit of variety on our cat. I think I want to add a little bit more variety this time to the tail. 
So coming right down here, I'll just start tracing around the cat's tail. I'll include all of the stripes in this. I'll hold Alt or Option to change directions really quick there. All right, and then I'll fill it with the same orange color. And this has already been placed as a child layer. That's perfect, just keeping our layers organized there. Okay, and as one last color, I want to add a background color. And to do that, I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool. I'll click and drag all the way across the document. This has been placed as a child layer to our cat. I'm just going to lower this down beneath the cat's layer, right there. All right, actually I'll put it beneath the swatch because I want to sample this lighter color for the background. And I'll fill it with that color. So now we just added a little bit of color to the background. Okay, we're almost done. The last thing I like to do to finish off my designs is adding just a little bit of shading, so let's do that. I'm going to grab the pen tool, and then I'm going to trace a shadow going underneath our cat. So I'm going to start it right here. I'll click and drag, and I'm going to trace so this line sort of lines up with where the cat's tail is, just a little bit outside of it. And I'm just going to trace it around like that. Then I can connect these two points. All right, and I'm just going to choose this darkest color right here, and I'll apply it. This layer has been placed underneath our cat's layers, which is perfect. And then I'm just going to lower the opacity of this layer so that it blends in with the ground a little better. All right, very nice. Next, I'm going to do a shadow on top of the cat's layers. I want this to be on the cat, and I'm just going to shade a little bit within it. I'm going to place my shading starting right here where this shadow starts. I'll click and drag to start that, and then I'm just going to trace it going around the tail like this, and then I'll curve it upward. All right, and then I think I'm actually going to bring it around. So you can see my points got a little bit messed up right there because I started by clicking and dragging. To fix this, I'll just grab the node tool, and then I'm going to hold on to this handle right here while holding Alt or Option to break that curve and bring it in. These points are still a little bit messed up because I clicked and dragged this one a little too far. I can bring this in, and now you can see that line is nice and smooth. Okay, with this curve, I'm going to apply this same dark color, and then I'll lower the opacity down to about 30%. That's the same amount we had for the other shadow. All right, and I think that looks pretty good. I want to do a little bit more shading in my cat right here on the arm and on the face, so I'll just quickly do that. Okay, I applied the color. I'll just lower this to 30%. All right. And now we are done. I just want to quickly show you the before and after of all of that shading because I think it makes such a big difference. I'll press H to get out the hand tool, just to get rid of all those blue lines. And now you can see the before and after of all of that shading. And I also want to show you, I'll just turn all of these layers off. Here's the complete before and after of turning our sketch into a vector. Great job! Now you can use these same techniques to turn your own sketches into beautiful vectors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.